Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about five things I wish I knew before I became a blockchain developer. So before we do that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the thumbs up button down below. And if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. So let's talk about five things I wish I knew before I became a blockchain developer. So a little bit more about me. You know, I'm a self-taught programmer. I've been programming for a long time. I didn't go to a coding boot camp. I didn't go to college for programming. I had to learn the hard way, which was on my own. And that's also how I learned blockchain programming. Everything I've ever literally learned in programming, I've either, you know, just try to learn for myself and use courses and learn from mentors and stuff like that. So I know how hard it can be to learn on your own. And also it was really hard to learn blockchain development at all when I learned because there are so few resources out there. That's one of the reasons I created this YouTube channel. So let's talk about the five things I wish I knew when I was trying to learn blockchain programming. So tip number one is define what you mean by a blockchain developer. And this could be a couple different things. One could be a blockchain application developer, like a dApp developer. And two could basically be like a blockchain core developer. So what's the difference? Well, a blockchain application developer, you know, usually builds apps. They build things that have user-facing features um, or like backends or things like that, right? And a core developer basically works on protocols and blockchains themselves, right? So that might be the difference between saying, I'm going to be a web developer. And, you know, that could mean that you want to build websites and web applications and APIs. Or like, I want to be a web developer and I want to develop HTTP and like work on the protocol or work on browsers or something like that. That would be like the difference between an application developer and a core developer in that case. That's similar to what that means as a blockchain developer. If you want to be a blockchain application developer, you're probably going to build like dApps and smart contracts and build user-facing applications that actually, you know, write data to the blockchain and like send cryptocurrency and things like that, right? That's a blockchain application developer versus a blockchain core developer. You might be working on blockchain protocols or even building your own blockchain. So tip number two is to specialize and you want to do this as fast as you can. You want to narrow down on a set of technologies that are going to solve the problem that you want to solve. Basically, you want to pick a blockchain and you want to learn the programming languages and all the tech and libraries that surround that ecosystem, right? It's okay to understand like other different blockchains, right? But you want to narrow down on something and get good at that and be proficient in it before you really start worrying about other stuff, right? So for example, you know, I work on mostly Ethereum on this channel. That's an example of specialization. I focus primarily on the tools and technologies for the Ethereum blockchain, like learning Solidity to write Ethereum smart contracts, learning Web3.js to talk to the blockchain, you're learning JavaScript so that you can write client-side applications. And so those are examples of technologies you would want to learn in order to specialize to learn Ethereum. And that's the point, you really wanna specialize. You don't wanna learn a little bit of EOS, a little bit of Ethereum, a little bit of Cardano, Hyperledger, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You really wanna pick and you wanna commit so that you can actually have a skill that's valuable and add value to projects or build something yourself. So tip number three is to solve a problem. And this is really important when you're learning blockchain programming because you want to actually, you know, solve the kind of problems that blockchains are good at solving. You want to think about applications that leverage the power of the blockchain, like applications that are trustless, censorship resistant, or, you know, like applications that are able to store value. You know, we're talking about web 3.0 where we can usher in the internet of value. So how can you leverage those things inside your application? What you really don't want to do for a production application is basically just copy and paste features from old uh, you know, applications and put them on the blockchain. And this can be okay for learning purposes. Like I'm probably doing some of that on this channel. You know, for example, it's okay to like learn how to build a to-do application on the blockchain. In fact, that's really common for other programming languages. Like anytime you learn a new web framework or, you know, a mobile application or something like that, when you're learning those two new technologies, it's okay to like learn to build a to-do application or to build Twitter or something like that. But when you're actually building production applications, you want to try to find ways where you can leverage the power of the blockchain to actually provide provide you know, unique value in an application that is better on the blockchain than somewhere else. So think about like the spaces where people are actually trying to use blockchain. Like places where we can store value, you know, financial transactions, digital identity, public records, supply chain, things like that. How can you leverage the power of blockchain in those spaces, right? So think about those spaces and that might give you some ideas about how you can use blockchain in your applications to actually provide value rather than just copying and pasting features from something else. So tip number four is to just build something. So what do I mean by that? Well, whenever you're learning a new programming language, 
and a new set of technologies, it's really tempting you just do tutorials and keep learning things and keep learning things and never actually put it into action. It's really tempting to never want to build something because there's this kind of inerrant fear that you have to overcome, this kind of initial pain and discomfort you have to do whenever you're learning something new to actually like connect the dots and put it into motion and build something for yourself. But that's the best way to learn. And that's what I always tell people to do. So think of a problem that you want to solve, like I talked about in the last point, and just start building it, right? And sometimes that's too much for some people. It's hard for them to take an idea, you know, out of thin air and start programming and build a thing. And if you can't do that, like maybe take some of my other tutorials, like the election decentralized application tutorial and start adding your own features yourself, right? That's a way to kind of take something that someone's already, already done and just add to it. And that'll get you creating new things. It'll kind of get that creative energy going and you'll actually learn how to solve problems that way because you'll run into walls. You won't be able to do something and you'll have to research how to do it and you'll have a much deeper knowledge and you'll really own the knowledge that you gain by learning this way. And tip number five, and this is the last tip, and this is really important, and this is something I really wish I knew when I was learning blockchain programming, is don't sweat the price of cryptocurrency. Now it's true, there's so much correlation between the price of Bitcoin and just the overall interest in blockchain technology in general. They're very correlated. So whenever there's a lot of you know hype around the Bitcoin price, there's definitely a lot more interest in blockchain technology. When prices are down and markets are down, you know the interest kind of pulls back some. But don't let that discourage you too much, right? It does have an effect on the overall marketplace. But you know I'm here for the long run. I think the best thing to do is to learn blockchain technology while it's in its early phases and think about how far ahead head you'll be whenever you know the technology is more mature and it's being more widely used and you know there's another bull market and people are excited about it again you'll actually possess the skill set when the demand keeps going up you'll be right in the middle of things just like anything worth investing in you want to invest for the long term and don't sweat the price of cryptocurrency so those are my five tips for learning blockchain programming those are things that I wish I knew when I was starting so if y'all like this video again click the subscribe button down below click the thumbs up button and if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can head up to my website at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.